Hello my loves and welcome to today's video. My name is Iris Celeste and as you see from the title of today's video, today is going to be part 2 of how to use terrain inside of Roblox Studio. If you watched yesterday's video, you would know that yesterday all I did was basically teach everyone the basics and how all the tools worked. That was all for the newbies. So today I will be telling you tips and showing you the demonstration of how I made this background right here and yesterday's background which is currently on your screen. Before I get into all the tips, I do want to let everybody know that when you're messing with terrain, it is not always going to look the way that you want at first. I do not want to give off the impression that when I do my terrain, I am perfect every single time because I am not. Currently, this background that you see, I initially hated it. Right now, I'm kind of feeling it. I like the vibes. But when you are messing with terrain, it is not always going to go the way that you want it. All I'm doing is just basically giving you tips on how to make it better or ways to make it look like the way you want with the certain tools that I am giving you. It's not always going to be perfect. Please do not get mad at me if you are still struggling with it. It is okay if you are just now starting out with terrain. It's literally hard for everybody who tries at one point in time. There's always going to be struggling and trying to get it to look the way that you want. But I'm here to tell you that it is okay. And that is what these tips are for. To simply help you get to what you want a lot faster than you normally would doing it by yourself. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the first few tips. So the first tip that I want to give everybody is when they are first starting out spawning in their terrain, always, always, always make your terrain thick. And you're probably like, Ira, but it looks ugly when it's like that. Do not worry. The reason why you always want your terrain to be thick is because whenever you're messing with your terrain, you never really know how much you're going to be editing it. So for example, let's say that you're trying to make a river. You never know how deep you want your river or how low it's going to go inside of your world. So when you have it thick enough, you never have to worry about having to fill in that space if you do mess up and accidentally make your river too deep. Or if you're simply eroding something or adding in mountains, that's basically just going to add on to it. It's just a significant way of making sure that you're not going to mess up and you have to keep on adding land. Alrighty, so the next tip that I have whenever you're messing with terrain is as soon as you load in your world, change the color of your materials. And you're probably like, but what if I like the color of my materials? It's okay, if you like the original Roblox colors, you can use that. But personally, whenever I get into my world, I always, always, always change the color of my main material that I'm going to be using. And usually, particularly for me, it's always going to be grass. So I will give you a quick demonstration on how to change your material colors, just in case you don't know how. And then I will explain why it is good to always change these colors. So the first thing that you actually want to do whenever you're changing your Roblox materials is you want to go ahead and open up your Explorer and your Properties tab. That will be in your view category just in case that you do not know where that is. Now when you look at your explorer you will see that there is your workspace. You want to go ahead and open that and then you'll see terrain. Once you click terrain you can move down to your properties and you'll see that there are tons of terrain properties that you can mess with. Now once you begin looking at the top of those properties you'll notice that below decoration there is actually material colors. Once you click this, you'll see it open up and there are tons and tons of different regular terrain materials. And if you look on the side, you'll notice that you can actually change the colors. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and click my grass color, the little square right here, and I'm going to open that up. As soon as you click it, you will notice that there is a color wheel that has popped up on your screen. And what you can do with this is you can actually change the color of your terrain to whatever you want it to be. Now, now that you know how to change the color of your terrain, the reason why I'm saying that it's probably good to change the color of it is just because whenever you're messing with your terrain, you want to automatically start getting that vibe or that feeling of what you're trying to create, which means that you're most likely going to be wanting to change the color of your materials. Usually whenever people are using terrain, they always use super duper bright colors just because in Roblox, low poly is a very, very popular way of making games so whenever you're using terrain I do want to recommend probably making your grass a little brighter it doesn't have to be like a super duper, super duper cool color like blue or you know oh excuse me red 
but if you do just want to go ahead and make it a little brighter all you do is just have to go to the side of the color wheel and just go ahead and brighten it up just a tiny bit whatever makes you comfortable alrighty so this next tip might be a little bit confusing but do not worry I'm going to try to explain it the best that I can but if it still doesn't make sense don't worry it's not that important you don't need it it's not life or death so the way that I love to start out my terrain is starting off with a specific scene now for example if you're looking at my background right now you'll notice that I have a sunset and that there are mountains around my sunset with a pathway inside of my mind when I first thought about this world this pathway was the first thing that I thought of so I made the pathway and then I just kind of built around it because I knew that this is where I wanted my camera to be so that mountain on the side the only reason that mountain is there is legit because I wanted to have a mountain on the side of that particular pathway which is it helps you basically make your world based on one part of your person's perspective, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. I'll just have to find a better way of explaining it. But all in all, it's basically just building your terrain around one camera point, one camera scene that you know for a fact that you want. And throughout that, you can just keep on adding into it and then it'll turn out to look very, very nice. Alrighty, so for the next tip that I personally always do whenever I make my world is always texture your world when you first join it. You're probably like, I wrote, what do you mean by texture it? Well, whenever you're messing with terrain, you want it to look natural. So if your plane is just completely flat, that's not really how real life world landscaping works. There's always going to be some type of bump, some type of curve, some kind of crack. You always, always, always want to make sure that you texture your ground a little bit, whether you're adding rocks or a tiny bit of curves. So the way to do that is usually what I take is my grow tool and I'm going to have my circle brush. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around my map, pressing little by little, just adding little like small bumps, small curves, just making it a little more realistic. Even if you're having a low poly road, it's still always good to make sure that your world is not completely flat or else it'll look kind of, you know, unrealistic. Just adding those extra details makes your world feel more alive and like you're actually inside of a real life world. Okay, so my next tip has to do with hills and how you form them and how you want to make them. Now, as you know, there are multiple brushes, there are three in particular, that you can use to be able to grow your own mountains. And personally, I have taken a long time to figure out what personally I like to form my hills and mountains with. And for me, instead of using the circle brush, I always, always use the cylinder brush. Now, you're probably like, Ira, what's the difference? At first, it might not seem like a big difference, but if you pay attention to the way that your land forms upwards whenever you're using the cylinder brush instead of the circle brush, you'll notice that it just forms better and that it's easier to maneuver your um, brush to make it to make your heel look exactly like the way that you want it to look. So personally, I always love to use cylinders to make my heels or mountains instead of using the circle brush. Now, if you notice, that means that your heel will be kind of pointy. It'll have like a point to it, a very, very smooth point. Sometimes I don't want there to be a point. Sometimes I just want it to be a little bit elevated and a nice flat top. Whenever you want a nice flat top, I do recommend using your square tool because as you know, it's a square and it's going to have a flat base at the top whenever it grows. Now you'll notice that it does look a little bit blocky and it doesn't look natural. That is okay. All you have to do is take your smooth tool and just smooth it out. That's also another tip. If your land is ever looking not natural, just use your smooth tool to smooth it out or your road. Personally, I always use those two just to make sure my land looks exactly the way that it needs to be. Now, since we are on the topic of hills and mountains, I do want to say, since I was just using super duper huge brushes, whenever you are using details or that you notice a part of your um, hill is not looking the way you want it to, you can always size down your brush and take away the strength and try to cultivate it or what's the word, carve it the way that you want it to look. 
if that makes sense sometimes a piece of your land is just a little too high so you want to erode it just a tiny bit but not too much using those brushes in a small form will really really help you be able to get those details in there um, for example whenever I want there to be kind of like a wall with my um, heels and I don't want it to be a slope I'll usually take my cylinder tool and I'll go up against the wall and you'll see that um, the ground on the bottom of my grass will start to show personally I love seeing that that is the way that I do things whenever I want my heels to look kind of healy but like also kind of like a wall at the same time it's so hard to um, explain it but it's only because the way that you do your terrain is all up to you so usually in situations when you want your terrain to look a certain way you're gonna have to find ways to mess with the brushes to get them to do what you want them to do specifically for you because no terrain is gonna look the same in somebody else's head so it's always best to just learn how to do those specific things alright so these next few tips are gonna have to do with coloring your land and bringing it to life now something I always 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 want to say is always color your world last and this is really really weird but this is personally what I always do. I always want to make sure that I have a lot of my land kind of done whenever I start coloring or adding more um, more materials to my world. So for example if you look at the background you'll notice there's a few splotches of that you know muddy type that yellowish muddy type look it's mud I think it's ground or mud um you'll notice those I added those last and it's only because I feel like those add a bit of character to my world another thing that I love to do is I always 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 use my rock whenever you're using rock I never ever paint it on there what I personally like to do is I love to take my grow button and this is specifically for mountains I always take my grow button I always make sure that it's on rock or ground I, I don't know what it's called I'm currently just talking um, I always like to swipe it on the sides of my mountains and for some reason I feel like it looks so much better when you grow it on there make sure that your strength is all the way down you do not want it to be super duper high or else it's going to stack on there really really weird and ugly so have your strength down have your tool not too big and just go ahead and grow it on the side and I swear to god it just makes everything just look so nice and it looks natural you know it doesn't look like you just painted it on there I don't know what it is about it but that's personally what I like to do another thing is I like to do is I like to take my um, ball brush and I like to make it super duper small turn the strength down to 0 0.1 and I like to go random places around my world and I just like to click a little bit like constantly click and it'll create like these little rocks that you see that I put around my map I absolutely love them I have no idea why but those are my tips for just like coloring your world color last grow on your rock and use small brushes only because it helps you detail them all right so the next tip is going to be with your world lighting now I love the Sun I have a plug-in it's called set Sun that allows you to click wherever in your world and it allows you to move your Sun however you want without having to mess with the lighting settings whenever you are making your world I believe it is important to make sure your Sun makes your world pop your sun is always 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 going to be a big um what's the word i'm looking for it's a big part of how your world looks because if your sun is all the way at the top your world might not be enhanced the way it can be when your sun is in the perfect position usually a lot of sunsets do this or if your sun is right above some mountains is usually the beautiful is that it can be your sun is going to most definitely make your build look so much better I promise here are some pictures on my screen that show you the difference in what the sun can do to your world it is absolutely amazing and since we're actually currently talking about the sun and your lighting settings I'm going to tell you guys a few things that you can actually add on to your lighting settings to make your build look really really nice now I'm not gonna go into detail on how to use them that is for a whole separate video just so I can explain it to you guys without the video being 50 million minutes long but um, the things that I use is always atmosphere depth of field sun rays and color correction 
those are my top things that I always 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 add to my lighting section to make my terrain and my regular builds look amazing like I said I'm just gonna let you guys know those are the ones that I currently use I'm not gonna explain to you how to use them just yet because I want to go into detail with that in a whole other video but those are the main selections that I use to make my builds look amazing now you can most definitely go and add those on your own and try to experiment with them by yourself but don't worry I will most definitely be making a video on those very very soon Alrighty my loves, it is finally time to get to the demonstration of today's video. Now I actually did a vote inside of my server. If you have not joined my server and you do want to join, go ahead and click the link down in the description to join my Discord server and then you'll be able to vote and talk to me and all my other beautiful subscribers. Now I did just do a vote and everybody picked this current background to be the demonstration instead of yesterday's video and that is completely fine so i will be going over this beautiful creation that you currently see instead of yesterday's i hope everybody is okay with that even though yesterday i did say i would do that one if you guys still want a demonstration for yesterday's background i will most definitely try to do that it is not guaranteed though but anyways let's get right on into today's masterpiece and demonstration now before we start I do want to say for some parts I actually am going to speed up the non-important parts but when I am going to go explain things I will um, slow it down for you. So as you see right here it is exactly what I told you in the beginning of this video is to always make your terrain super duper duper thick just because you never know how you're going to end up editing it. So obviously I am putting all of my worlds down, I am using my select tool and the fill tool to put in all of my land just because I don't really like to draw it in and right here you see me going and deleting my base plate. The next thing I do is I'm going to go ahead in my terrain and I'm going to go ahead and change my grass color, color not color, color to a beautiful bluish color. It's like a bluish greenish color it was at first. Um, I did have it at that bluish color but I was kind of feeling more green as I went later into the build so you'll see me change that along the way. And here in the next part you'll actually see me beginning to texture my world which I, I told you guys I literally take all these steps. It's kind of become like a natural thing for me now um, whenever I start off doing my landscaping it makes me feel comfortable doing it so you'll see me do that for a little bit. Here you begin to see me start messing with my cylinder and making my mountains. Here you will notice me using my cylinder um, tip that I used earlier which is going ahead and forming a wall using my cylinder tool. Okay, so if you read my text earlier, you would know that I pointed out um, the specific angle. So if you look in between all of the mountains, you'll notice that there's like small pathways right there. You see it. It's like that small angle that I've been using the entire time just to make sure that my mountains are around that center area. And another thing to notice is right now I'm using super duper small brushes just so I can make sure that my 
detailing for my land is precise and not too big. There's that angle again. You see it? You see it? Now right here, you will notice that I am actually changing the color of whatever I'm using because like I said, you want to make sure that you have your base of your terrain already made, which is currently what I have. So I did begin coloring my world. Like I said, you don't have to be completely done, but it is one of the last main steps you should do. So I did end up coloring and adding it and growing it as you see I'm currently using the growing tool and coloring it somewhat and just making sure that everything looks the way it's supposed to. Here you will see I am beginning to make my pathways. So in a little bit it'll be kind of hard to see but I was taking my growing tool and I was adding texturing to my world slightly with a super duper small brush. It might not be noticeable to the naked eye but I most definitely was texturing it. Oh and adding more you know, concrete rock as you can see. <laughs>
here you will notice I finally began to color again because again I was very very close to having my finishing you know touches and stuff I was almost finished so I started coloring more Alrighty you guys, that is the end of today's video tips and demonstrations. I truly truly hope this has helped you and I hope that you take these tips into your own studio world and you practice, practice, practice and maybe come up with some tips of your own that you would love to share with all of us. Now that is the end of how to use terrain. I will be coming out with some more tutorials on terrain because there's so much more that I have to teach you but that is the end of today's video because we are currently at 30 minutes and I do not want to take up all of your time but I will say if you guys want this version this demonstration in a slower version and you want it in real time make sure to comment down below 
hashtag real time terrain so I can go ahead and make another video of this just being in real time instead of all the way sped up. But without further ado, before I leave you guys, I want to tell you guys I have a Discord server and I have Twitter. I'm going to start doing new challenges super duper soon, so if you're interested in that, make sure to go click those links, follow, join, you know, all the other good stuff. But without further ado, I love you all and I will see you later. Goodbye.